Well, hey, everyone, this is Christopher with the Exorcism Team Discussion, and I'm so glad to be back before you on this season. Um, I'm just really excited by the response that everyone is having towards the incest, molestation, and sexual abuse series. And I'm glad to see that it's helping so many different people identify things that have been uh, out of out of order, out of whack in their lives. And I'm hoping that as you guys are partaking of these teachings, that you will seek us out to get an exorcism. You can reach us at exorcisms at lighthousechurching.org and we'll get you scheduled. Um, We will do Skype exorcisms, in-person exorcisms, but all of these things are being done in order to help you become free and learn what's going on with with your uh your spirit your soul and your body um some of you have made requests about understanding some information on soul ties and i found something in uh richard ing's book spiritual warfare that i wanted to bring before you to today so that you can um understand where some of the information that we've gotten and have been able to use You know, and in cases where people have been uh, incested, molested, and sexually abused, there are demonic soul ties that attach themselves to you. And as a part of the process for having an exorcism, we expel and cut those soul ties off of you. And, you know, in part five, we were talking about how sometimes the, uh, the body parts of a person who's molested someone or incested them are attached and we have to remove those, those body parts as well. So it's when the person gets free from these things, they are so able to function in life. And it is awesome to be able to help people understand why they're doing the things that they're doing and to be able to give them that out to, to be able to give them the understanding that you didn't seek this out. And so many people are, are bound with in the, the confines of lust and promiscuity, and they don't even know how they got into it. And, you know, we have found that this, this pattern that has come from incest, molestation, and sexual abuse affects so many people in so many different areas. So, Let's go into this a little bit with the soul ties. I don't think I'll be before you long, but I just wanted to uh, share this information because there are, in in another way, you always hear about soul ties in a negative format. There are good soul ties that you have. You know, there are good relationships that God wants you to have. And this is where the, the teaching, I believe, came from about soul ties because it started out with Jonathan and David's relationship. So let's start here. First Samuel 18, 1. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Now, some people with the radical mindset of taking this to believe that Jonathan and David were homosexuals. If this were true, God would have never said that David was a man after his own hearts. So... If you have this mindset that Jonathan and David were homosexuals, you are completely wrong. You're completely false. They were not homosexuals. They were just really, really good friends. Now, there are people in the church who will take this scripture and have homosexual thoughts about someone, and they will try to use this scripture to justify their their thoughts and their behaviors. Please don't do this. Please don't take the word of God and twist it to make it say something that it does not say. You will never, you will never be honored in the kingdom of God by doing such things. Um, The the Bible even says there's a curse on you if you try to alter the the word of God, you alter the books that are there. So please don't do that. Mr. Ian goes on to say, the souls of men and women also knit together with negative repercussions. A domineering mother's soul knitted to her sons 
and he ended up in an insane asylum suffering from schizophrenia. When the woman cut the spiritual umbilical cord and cast it off, the son recovered instantly and several days later left the asylum normal. Manipulation and control by another person may create negative soul ties. Often the souls of ex-lovers knit together, even though they no longer see each other, they may marry others, but they continue to be tormented by thoughts of the former lover. Strange circumstances may bring them together, and they bump into each other at unlikely times and places. Even if their relationship ended on a sour note, they often think of, fantasize about, and lust for each other. Their soul ties need to be broken and cast off. Oh, I could tell you stories about the amount of people who have been in bitter divorces, bitter marriages, and they wind up back in the bed sleeping with each other. Both remarried, both supposedly in a happy, happy relationship, but because these soul ties weren't properly dealt with, they weren't allowed to be removed by the, by the person. It, it, it set a trap for them to, to mess up their new relationships. And if you are a person who has been divorced multiple times, we really um, encourage you to get an exorcism. Get an exorcism before you remarry because you are most likely going to remarry the same type of person that you divorced. If you don't do this, you are setting yourself up for failure because you are going to gravitate to the same type person I'm dealing with several people right now who, who have been divorced, and it's amazing how spirit draws to spirit, soul draws to soul, and flesh draws to flesh. And in the spirit realm, people who are lustful are attracted to other people who are lustful. And we see this pattern take place in so many different types of relationships. So when you're dealing with this, if you really have, have changed, if you really have learned your lesson about different things and learned about yourself after you have been divorced, because some people go through major, major epiphanies. You learn what you, what you are, what you, what you are not, what you will put up with, what you won't put up with. But if you don't get rid of the soul ties to this other person, you will go right back to them. I've seen it. I've, I've, I've seen it. And sometimes people get into situations where they're so, they, they have to hate this person in order to protect themselves so they don't wind up back in the bed with the person that they just left. It, I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes when you look at someone who has such a bitter, bitter divorce, it really is they, deep down on the inside, they love them but they can't control them, so they're upset. So this soul tie is formed, and in order for them to be able to, to cut themselves free, they develop such a hatred for that person. It's just, it's just completely ungodly. One wife in our church kept bumping into an ex-lover. Although neither party consciously arranged it, demons tormented her constantly with lustful fantasy thoughts in frustration. She found herself unable to fully love her husband and a, a wonderful Christian brother. Soon her moodiness prevented her from growing in God. Despite every effort on her part, when she finally broke the soul ties, the demons tormenting her left, and she grew daily in the Lord. With the oppression and guilt gone, her relationship with her husband and others flourished. This is real. Please believe me, this is real. Other negative ties include homosexual partners, former bosses, teachers, employers, employees, parents, siblings, relatives, or anyone who played a dominant part in your life at some point. Sexual partners can pass multitudes of spirits on through sex. 
And we've seen this. Sometimes there are hordes, not whores, hordes, H-O-R-D-E-S, of demons that are down on the inside of the person. If demons seem to get stronger during a session, someone in the room could have spirits who feed the demons and the person being delivered. And we have encountered this as well. There have been times when uh, family members are sitting in the room and they're supposedly trying to help, but the family members have the same demons inside of them that are inside of the person that you're working on. And we have to put the family member out and say, hey, you know, you need to be signed up for deliverance as well so that you can be set free. You need to cut soul ties between those people and ask God to place a shield around the person so that no other spirits can feed and give strength to the person's demons. You know, the building that we work out of, we have uh, different activities that go on throughout throughout the day and throughout the evening. And sometimes there's we have to pray and break the, uh, the assignments of the demons because the demons are looking for someone else to go into. And if other people in that building have the same, same type spirit, they will, they will go into those people there. So we always make sure that we cover the entire building in the blood of Jesus Christ, anyone in that building in the blood of Jesus Christ. And then we make sure that the holy angels escort those demons straight into the pit so that no one else has a chance of being infected by these spirits that are being cast out. Mr. N goes on to say, uh, you need to cut soul ties between those people and ask God to place a shield around the person so that no other spirits can feed and give strength to the person's demons. Sometimes you may need to physically separate people such as buddies, spouses, boyfriends and girlfriends, or parents and children. In one such case, after bombarding martial arts spirits of Ki or Chi, the spirits started calling another person in the room by name. At first, we thought that the person being delivered was calling because he felt that the second person could help cast out the demons. As the second person walked toward the first, the demons started to become stronger. I do not mean to imply that distance affects a demon's strength. Needless to say, when we put a shield around him, cut soul ties and ushered the second person out of sight, the spirits gave up and left. And this was an experience that Richard Ng has had. We've, you know, similar similar experiences with us when when the, the blood of Jesus was placed as a shield in between these two people that we had, you know, the demons instantly lost strength and they were able to be cast out and expelled from the other person. Witchcraft creates heavy, negative soul ties. If you're one who's been under the influence of witchcraft, those soul ties tied to that will also place a negative influence upon you. In addition, the soul can be fragmented and destroyed piecemeal. Satan steals away fragments of the soul so that the victim never feels complete or at peace. Satan steals away fragments of the soul so that the victim never feels complete or at peace. Sometimes they feel something is missing in life and they don't know what. Does this sound familiar? Especially when you're dealing with something with incest, molestation, and sexual abuse. In one case, a woman's parents dedicated her to Satan as an infant, so she never felt completely at peace with herself although she faithfully walked with Jesus and attended church regularly. She didn't even know about the dedication until the Holy Spirit showed her. In another situation I worked with, a good friend of the troubled person practiced witchcraft. The troubled person often dreamt of the friend and at times even heard the friend calling her, although she was alone. Though they had not talked to each other in person for a number of years, the tormented person's thoughts were being controlled by her friend. So this person who had the witchcraft was controlling the other person. We asked God to send as many angels as necessary to recover the fragments of her soul, put them back in proper order, and quicken and restore them to her. Something literally snapped in her, and she suddenly felt complete and whole for the first time since she could recall. 
Her mind became clear and she felt alive. Thus saith the Lord God, woe to the woman that sow pillows to all armholes and make her chiefs upon the head of every statue to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will you save the souls alive that come unto you? And will you pollute me among my people for hands full of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save souls alive that should not, should not be alive, that should not live, sorry, by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith you there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall no more be in your hand to be hunted, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Now this is out of Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 18 to 22. Something else tied to soul, soul ties. Names. Sometimes naming a person after some ancestor will form a soul tie with that person. Hawaiians love to name their children after gods, kahunas, or famous ancestors. Orientals name their children after famous people, ancestors, or priests. They take their children to the Shinto or Buddhist temple and dedicate them to the gods or goddesses. Because of the name and or dedication, a soul tie is created. Names are important to God. You may recall that God changed the name of Abram to Abraham, Genesis 17, 5, and Jacob to Israel, Genesis 32, 28. In those days, an individual's name was significant inasmuch as it reflected either character or destiny. When the two sons of Eli were killed and Eli broke his neck and died, Eli's daughter-in-law named her newborn son Ichabod. Ichabod, meaning the glory of the Lord, is gone. In the book of Revelation, God promised that he would give each overcomer a new name written on a white stone. Now, I want to, I want to talk about this something because this, this soul tie um, to the names is very, very important. And unfortunately, there's the, in the African-American culture, the names that we are, are placing upon our children are absolutely ridiculous. Sometimes we're calling our children precious and desire, you know, things that are sexual in nature. And if you happen to have been one of these people who, you know, you're attracting demons to your, to your children, first of all, our children are, are wearing clothes that are sexually explicit for a two and three year old to be uncovered and to be uh, promoted like prostitutes is, is absolutely wrong. And your, your children should be fully clothed and out of the eye of any pedophile, out of the eye of any, any adult who would seek to, to violate them. And you should want them to, to not be violated. You know, gone are the days where children can be children because there's so many predators that are out there. But where does it start? And I know people are gonna have a fit with me because I'm talking about clothing, but there's a proper place and time for underwear. And that is in your house when you're getting dressed for you to, for you to be able to see your underwear to make sure that they're on in the right direction and then put your clothes on over top of them. Nobody in the world should be going out of the house with underwear. Some of the bathing suits that, that are out there are completely inappropriate. Completely inappropriate. So can you imagine a five and six-year-old being dressed up in these provocative clothings? It's not good. It's, it's not good at all. You're opening the doorways for your children to be attacked spiritually by people who are bound with lusts and perversions. So... You know, and then you give them a name of precious and delicious. 
I'm, I'm, I'm serious. People are doing this to their children. And they don't understand why they've been attacked. Some of them don't even know that their children have been attacked. And they get mad at the men and the women who attack them. But you, parent, opened the door because you didn't properly clothe them and you gave them some type of ridiculous name that was sexual in nature. We, we can do better. In the book of Revelation, God promised that he would give each overcomer a new name written on a white stone, Revelation 2.17. God also promised to write on the forehead of each overcomer the secret name of God, the name of the city of God, and the new name given to the Lord Jesus, Revelation 3.12. Unfortunately, names can create a negative bond, so we need to break demonic vows and ties that are associated with names. Please hear me. This is so, so true. You know, my wife, um, for a long time, people kept calling her Kat. And her, her full name is Catherine. But because, you know, it was easy, easier for them to say Kat, you know, it just, it just stuck with her all the way out through her, through her adulthood. And come to find out after some times of deliverance, it caused her to not like her own true identity of Catherine. So an alternate personality formed in my wife because she actually hated herself. So what do you, you know, when you're nicknaming people things, you need to be in the spirit. You know, God gave them a name. If they, if they were given a good godly name, you need to name them that. You need to be calling them that. Sometimes you don't need to, you don't need to do a nickname. Just just celebrate the person for who they are. So if you're walking around under a nickname, now is the time for you to evaluate. Hey, was this given to me by somebody who was who was a little messed up? And do I need to go back and in in and uh operate under my my true God given name? Sometimes you will find that this is a key to you getting a breakthrough in your situation. You know, you're crying out to God, fasting, giving him your all, reading your word every day. But someone's calling you Slick Willie. Hey, Slick Willie, how you doing? You know, what kind of uh, negative connotations is that coming up with? What kind of bondage are you putting yourself in because you're, you're carrying and you're walking under that name of Slick Willie? Things that you have to acknowledge. The soul ties. I'm going to go through this last section here, but there's, there's, a, we'll probably do some more on this in the days ahead. Involvement in the occult. Involvement in the occult, whether it is innocent or otherwise, can bring about strong curses. Not only that, but scary nocturnal visitors, ghostly apparitions, voices, and bizarre happenings may start to occur in a person's life as he or she becomes involved in the occult. Some feel oppressed and sense a dark presence. Others begin to hear voices at night and even during the day. The voices often start out sweet and charming, but end up as screams full of rough, filthy, blasphemous words. Some see things at night, a shadow of a head, hands or legs, forms floating around, forms disappearing around corners, Things moving around without human hands or objects simply disappearing. Some report loud voices at night and feel their spirits leaving their bodies in levitation or astral projection without effort and against their wills. Th this is real stuff. This is real stuff that happens. If you report nightmares of being forced into perverted sex with a half goat, half man beast, while other spirits look on and cheer. They wake up physically bruised and exhausted. Nightly visitations leave them tired and desperate. If you don't have this book, this is a resource that you need to have. Spiritual Warfare by Richard A. This was on, I started tonight on uh, page 91 of this book, of this resource. 
I'm telling you, there's a lot to dealing with exorcisms and helping set people free. And I want you to understand that we're not doing this just to, you know, to make a name for ourselves. We really sincerely want to help you. So if you have some of these things going on, please reach out to us. Exorcisms at LighthouseChurchInc.org and get yourself set up so that we can start helping expel these demons out of you. This has been Christopher with the Exorcism Team Discussion. I hope this helps you on today and in future days. If you have not seen all of the series on incest, molestation, and sexual abuse, please go back and watch this because it's, 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 it's helping so many people. You'd be blessed.